Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. God's blessings to you and your family from Zeb at the Ranch, Zeb and Deanne. Merry, Merry Christmas. Here comes Kate Smith. And God bless America. On this Wednesday, December the 11th, good morning. We need a caller with the Pledge of Allegiance. And a good, good morning to you and yours. I'm Zeb Bell, and good morning to Zeb at the Ranch on this. Uh, right now, we're getting some snow, a snowy kind of a Wednesday morning. Brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with the best of tires to get you through anything nature throws at you on the road, okay? Don't forget your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. And, of course, our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. At 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And, of course, Greystone Crossing, Senior Living. Absolutely, 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Seniors living the good life with friends. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You did good, Wheels. Thank you very much. And right now, let's go to the weather forecast brought to everybody by k and Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Hello, Roger and the crew and uh, their front yard at <laughs> that business consists of all kinds of tools and equipment you might need for any kind of a job. Absolutely. And uh, they've got tools and equipment for both long and short-term rental. They've got it all. They've got it all. And if you're not sure what you need, you better get on the landline and give them a call. Talk to them. They'll help you. 678-3122. K&R Rental on the Burley Paul Highway. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Looks like we're expecting some rain and or snow over the next couple of days. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit breezy out of the west at about 10 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour, looking at a high of 43. Tonight, snow showers are possible, mixed with rain, especially in the valley. Steady temperatures is about 39, and it's going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tomorrow, rain and snow mixed, expecting a high of 45 by tomorrow night. Rain and and snow likely. More snow showers up in the higher elevations. Low of 32. Going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 40 miles an hour. For Friday, rain and snow mixed with a high of 41. And it's going to be breezy as well. That's going to continue for Friday night. New snow accumulations anywhere from 1 to 2 inches possible with a low of 25. And by the weekend, looks like mostly cloudy skies. 20% chance of snow showers in the forecast. Highs are going to be in the low 30s. Lows right around 20. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth Oh, uh, Gina, thank you. Very, very well done. Good weather forecast, even if I didn't like all the content. <laughs> I don't like snow. K&R Rental, of course, bringing you the weather at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn on the Burley Paul Highway. Like I said, feel free to contact them for more information about 
All the tools and equipment you need right there at K&R Rental on the Burley Paul Highway, 678-3122. Wow, we have a jam-up program today. We've got Dave Bego in Indianapolis, Indiana. We've got Eric Mitchell coming on to talk about the impeachment mess. Uh, we're going to give away another ham later on this morning. And we've got Michael Fisher coming on, and uh, he's going to be talking about the homelessness problem in the United States. And then Dan Perkins, an old friend of ours from Florida, is going to be on talking about, again, this mess with the Democrats. Calls are welcome and appreciated. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. I want to remind everybody about Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Mm-hmm. Telephone number to call, 678-0459. They're also open early in the morning at 7.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. All your heating, cooling, and electrical needs right there. Right there with the company that's been in business for almost seven decades. Wow. Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. You give them a call or stop in and see them today. Uh, Wheels, could you, if possible, turn up the feed line to my headsets just a little bit if you would please and i'll go ahead and take this caller good morning caller you're on the air good morning jeb the menu at the burley senior center today is birthday and anniversary dinner that means we're going to have turkey and dressing mashed taters and gravy green beans salad yummy dessert uh i also want to remind everybody that they can call in and get one to go for only five bucks. Well, Joe, I'll t- and, uh, we're going to have a prime rib dinner tomorrow night, Thursday. Uh, call and get your tickets while there's still a few left. All right, Joe. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of good things going on over there at the Senior Center on Overland Avenue in Burley. You're the greatest ambassador for that business and what they do. Great food, and Joe Taylor said so. There you go, Joe. Merry Christmas to you. Same to you and your staff. God bless you. God bless you, man. Thank you very, very much. I uh, really like that man. He's done so much for the community, and we appreciate him. By the way, before we get rolling on quite a few things this morning, I want to remind you that if your transmission in your vehicle isn't really doing what it's supposed to do, well, yeah, you put it in drive, and what happened? nothing you put it in reverse and what happened you went forward hmm you got a problem you better have your transmission checked by rick at mountain transmissions and he's located at 504 east main street in burley number to call for free estimates and free diagnosis six seven eight nine one one zero rick and mountain transmissions wishing you and yours a very merry christmas uh somebody else that wants to wish you a very merry christmas and uh they certainly hope you get through the holidays without having anything happen, like having to have your septic tank being pumped or whatever, or liquid waste removal, or your sewer and sink drain lines clean. I know Dino Septic Service, they're there in case you have a problem. Absolutely, with the best of service to you and your family. And uh, all you need to do is call them. Uh, fast, fair, friendly service at 436-6526 or 678 678- one six three eight. Absolutely, with that great big truck that says "smells cargo" on the way. Dino Septic Service. There is nobody better. Mm-mm, they're the best. All right, calls are welcome and appreciated at four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Um, yesterday. I had some calls, and people said that they were having a hard time hearing some of the program. Now, regardless of the area, regardless of where you are, if there is a problem, first of all, check your radio and make sure that it's not the radio's fault, and then call me on my cell phone at 312-2976. I don't want anybody to not listen to the program. That's not fair to my advertisers or, quite frankly, me. So uh, I just want to make sure that everybody can hear, and if you do have a problem, we will get 
it taken care of. I can promise you that. All right, calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. A couple of things I want to just throw out here. Uh, as you probably heard on the news during 8 o'clock, the little Swedish girl, Greta Thunberg, you know, the little 16-year-old that's telling us all how to live and what to do and what not to do with the environment and also how we should live our lives, living in a cold atmosphere because she doesn't believe in global warming. She was put up as Time Person of the Year. I, I had to laugh when I heard and read about this, and I'll tell you why it was kind of funny. Is because, and this didn't come from our government or any government officials, it came from Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro. Jair Bolsonaro, I love that name. And uh, he simply said that uh, Greta Thunberg is nothing more than a brat. <laughs> I love that. Uh, he had some other things to say about her, too. And uh, she just said that, uh, he just said that uh, Greta is getting a lot of press. And she really is just a child that is being motivated and pushed by others. She is articulate. And she is a pretty good actress. And she is being used by the liberal left on climate change. But I thought it was cute. Jair Balasanro said she's a brat. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. This is going to be a notice that I need your help. Yes, next Thursday on the 19th, we're going to be over at Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland in Burley, and we want you to be there. Why? Because it's our annual Christmas party at Denny's. Mm Mm-hmm. America's Diner. We're going to have Santa Claus there. We're going to have all kinds of fun things. And we have that wonderful lady coming back, Ashley Ludlow, that was uh, absolutely a knockout last year with singing Christmas carols all through the three hours of my program. It was phenomenal. So don't forget, that's at Denny's Restaurant next week on Thursday the 19th at 611 North Overland in Burley. You can stop in anytime while you're Christmas shopping or whatever for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant, waiting right now to serve you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. I can hear other stations uh, in your background there, but I can still hear you loud and clear. Uh, I appreciate your calling on that. I don't know what the problem is or what it might become. I don't know. It may be something wrong with the transmitter that needs to be addressed or whatever, but if it gets to the point where you can't hear, you call me and you let me know because we'll take care of it. I promise. Well, the thing that uh, concerns me, there's so much of this uh, uh, stuff going on about the children. Well, the children that are coming in from the foreign countries are being used as weapons. Yes. Along with these children coming in, we've got subversives coming in using these children as a means of entering our country. Well, you know, and I'll tell you what, and if I step on somebody's toes, Tony, I don't uh, really care because it needs to be said. There are many church denominations, one of which I'm going to be talking about here in just a few minutes, that think the United States can and should take any and all refugees into our country. We are not a sponge. We cannot take them in. We cannot absorb the cost. We cannot absorb all the financial and economical detriment that it would cause, and I'm fed up with this. Well, the church that I attended for nine years is guilty of doing this. And it's going to cost the taxpayers millions and millions of dollars because once these children get in here, they're going to need to free this and free that and everything else. And the next thing you know, 
you and I won't have any income left because we're too busy being taxed to support this. Well, the biggest way and the easiest way to absolutely destroy a wealthy, prominent country and hurt its citizenry is to just open the doors and give, 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 and let anybody that wants to come in, let them come in. Pretty soon, the boat is going to be like the Titanic. It's going to sink. Well, we'll be in the same condition that countries like India are in. Yeah continues, and I hope Trump puts a stop to it. I do, too, and uh, whether I sound uh, calloused and uh, not caring, uh, that's irrelevant. I'm just stating the facts, that we cannot be a sponge to absorb all the people that want to come here. Well, if you want to destroy a good country, just keep doing what we're doing to let new age kids come in, and uh, there won't be any America to worry about. Absolutely. Tony, I could not agree more. And to you and your lovely wife, Merry, Merry Christmas. God bless you, man. Thanks. Well, I hope we can get together one day. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to do it between Christmas and New Year's. I guarantee it, okay? All right. Good enough. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. I want to remind you that uh, there's some four-legged critters out there that want you to take care of them. That's your pets and your livestock, and especially in the wintertime when they need a lot of fresh water. And, oh, but Dr. Bill brought up a really good point the other day. He said, please, please keep your Christmas tree ornaments, all your Christmas ornaments, tinsel, all of that away from your pets. They get to chewing on it, and, boy, there's a lot of toxicity there. And could, I'm just going to be blunt, kill them. you got to be careful. It's not healthy. It's not good. So if you have any problems, don't forget to call Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bill and the crew want you to have healthy pets and animals, and they will help. Call them at 678-1177, Ark Animal Hospital, where they have warm hearts for cold noses. Really good people. Um, I want to just get one thing out of the way, and then I'm going to talk to you about some subject that really has infuriated me this morning, and it ties in, dovetails into what I was talking about just a moment ago with Tony, and it's about a church that absolutely is displaying a nativity scene in, I think, a disgusting and despicable manner, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Merry Christmas wishes from Butte Irrigation at 116 South, 600 West in Paul. And also they've got another location uh, just a little bit north of Kimberly by Red Cap Corner. Butte Irrigation. And boy, I'll tell you what, when you need parts of service or service, think of Butte Irrigation. They will get you wet. They wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. As do the folks at Golden Valley Warehouse at 1000 South, 468 West of Burley. Hello! everybody over at Golden Valley. Uh, the Adams family, they've owned that for years, and they've got the best of quality seed for you, barley, wheat, triticale, oats, alfalfa, the list goes on. They're wishing you and yours a very merry Christmas, along with our dear lady, Vicki, at Vicki's Country Gardens at 185 South, 600 West of Paul. Hey, she's got gift certificates for stocking stuffers. All you got to do is call or set up an appointment over at Vicki's Country Garden, 431-5667. What a great idea for a Merry Christmas from Vicki's Country Garden. All of these folks want you to have a very blessed and happy Christmas season. This story, when I heard about it, and uh, my lovely bride did some follow-up, pulling the information on the computer, a California church is displaying a nativity scene depicting Jesus, Mary, and Joseph as refugees in separate cages to draw attention to the conditions faced by migrants seeking asylum in the United States. When I read about this, I was absolutely livid. The Claremont, California, United Methodist Church, about 30 miles east of Los Angeles, has put Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus in separate cages topped with barbed wire. You know... This open borders nonsense, this 
y'all come on in, the citizens are going to pay for you, is absolutely horrendous, and it's getting worse. One of the people interviewed said, it is disrespectful in my view to put the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, in a cage at any time. Your political views should not be mixed with the birth of our Savior. Shame on you. I could not agree more. To the Claremont United Methodist Church, shame be heaped upon you for this. Putting our Lord and Savior in a cage with barbed wire. There is no comparison. There is no correlation. And I am sick and tired, and we all should be, of being condemned for saying our country, our citizens first. Because we are being overrun. Caller, good morning. Do you agree with me or not? I agree. And they can't even dare call themselves Christians if they pull that. I, you know, that's kind of a story, and I, I'm not going to hedge on mentioning denomination. I'm going to tell it like it is, and I'm going to put the facts out there for you to discern. But some mental giant of the church had come up with this idea uh, in an effort to show that we needed more and we should be the open door for all people coming into this country. And I, like Frosty Woldridge and many others, are saying enough is enough. We can't keep being the sponge. Exactly. Well, and here's the other thing that I thought about in that, too. Uh, they're, they're also trying to say that that's Trump, that, you know, but come on, people, figure it out. It was your favorite little Obama that did it. You know, okay, I really don't care who started it with the cages. And yes, you're right, it was Obama. There's no question about that. I agree with you. But what I'm saying is that for a church or any denomination or group of people, to try to uh, dictate to the American public that, oh, you're wrong, and we're going to destroy the biblical uh, story of Christmas and the birth of Jesus. We're going to put him in a cage along with Mary and Joseph, and we're going to just show you that we want more refugees seeking asylum in America. I don't know about you, lady, but my tax dollars are just to the point where, why? Why shouldn't we support our veterans? Why shouldn't we support our elderly? Why shouldn't we support our more of our homeless situation? But why are we always opening the door up wide and saying, don't worry about the borders, y'all just come on in? Yeah, well, and there's a huge, huge gap between asylum and just... <laughs> I want to come in because I want to come in, and I'm look at all the free crap I'm going to get. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm absolutely going to come out in total condemnation, total condemnation against this church, the Claremont, California United Methodist Church. I absolutely uh, will not say a good word about them, their congregation, or their supposed leadership. I find this an insult to Christmas and the birth. Of Jesus. Exactly. Thank you well, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and thank you for your call. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Well, how about the rest of you out there? Oh, are you going to say, oh, Zeb, you're wrong? You can feel free to do that. I mean, I'll take your call. Love to hear from you, but I'm not going to back up at all. You can bet on that. Hey, don't forget Sophie's Cookies, Sophie's Cookies, Sophie's Chatterbox with the most delicious cookies. Every Monday we give away a dozen cookies at exactly 8.30. Well, pretty close. And uh, you might be the lucky winner. Don't forget Sophie's Chatterbox right there on the square in Rupert. Wow, what a bakery, what a restaurant, 530 East Street in Rupert. You're going to love the food. You're going to love all the bakery goods at Sophie's Chatterbox. Don't forget that. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I really would like to hear from you on this issue, and then I've got some other ones too, but I also want to remind you, Anderson Farms and Jones Commodities want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a great 2020. Mm -hmm. And they want you to drive real safe out there. And by the way, too, if you're looking for an employment change for the next year, they are offering 
opportunities for employment. Yes, sir, re Bobby, all you got to do is call Lon and the crew at 878-2816 or 878-2820, Anderson Farms and Jones Commodities. Merry, Merry Christmas. All right, callers, it's your turn. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. You want to hear the ultimate in hypocrisy? This is it right here. This sleazy little girl that does not have the IQ of an ice cube, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Phony, fraud, perverted, left-wing socialist. No, I am not going to say anything nice about her. She is absolutely going to the top rung of the ladder, preaching to the world about how we, we, you and me, need to stop getting on airplanes Stop going anywhere for, like, Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, because we're burning fossil fuels. We need to stop eating meat. She has come out in a condemnation of the meat industry, the beef industry, agricultural practices. And she is trying to be the puritanical leader of the free world. Oh, oh, but wait, wait. Let us go a little bit in depth to what her New York district looks like and is. Okay? Yesterday afternoon I was alerted to this story by a friend of mine back in D.C. And then last night, Tucker Carlson carried some of it on his show. But Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's district that elected her is beyond a shadow of a doubt, one of the filthiest, sleaziest, and absolutely destitute of any morality districts of anywhere in New York. Uh, Open uh, uh, prostitution and just absolute filth and sleaze. And yet this woman, this former bartender that all of a sudden overnight has had her IQ go up from very low levels to where she's supposedly the smartest woman in the world, is preaching to us to change and clean up the world, supposedly. And she's from a district that is nothing but a garbage dump. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. I saw that report, too, and I thought... You know, the hypocrisy of the the liberal left, the socialist, I mean, they talk a good fight, but they don't believe really what they're preaching. You know, they got they want power and control. It's just like the global warming hoax. I mean, it's just you know, they 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 don't have any facts in the impeachment. They when it comes to the environment, it's just all Feel goody stuff, you know, and and you know Patrick Moore, you know the co-founder of Greenpeace, he he got out of there, he he withdrew or he got out of Greenpeace because he found out it was not about saving the environment, it was about controlling people. That's right. And so, yeah, the filth there, and then he, another thing they pointed out was her district in Queens, I think it is, someplace mm-hmm. in the New York City area. Mm-hmm. Uh, is loaded up with the illegal aliens, you know, and uh, that's probably how she got elected. Well, have you ever, uh, wait a minute, Adrian, Adrian, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to Queens in New York City? I have not. I have. I have. I lived back in New York for three months, uh, way back when I was in college. And during the summer, I went back there and worked back in that area. And I'm going to tell you right now that uh, if it's really bad now, 
It was really ugly then. It is an area where anything you want from the sleazy side of life is available. Anything you want to do in the sleazy side of life is there. And along now with it being highly populated by majority numbers of illegal aliens, anything goes. The drug traffic is absolutely pathetic back there. And how can this hypocrite, this huge hypocrite called Alexander Ocasio-Cortez demand to Adrian Arp and Zeb Bell that we've got to curtail our lifestyles and diminish what we do so that she can represent a district that is nothing but garbage. Well, yeah, and then in addition to that, I guess there's a bunch of, a lot of sex trafficking going on there, too. I yep. mean, it's just unbelievable. It's the, it's the filth, the, the vermin of the earth live there, basically. Yep. Uh, so, and she's one of them. Yeah. You know? And uh, so she's out there trying to preach this, all this stuff. And like I say, she's nothing but a bartender. Uh, she has no qualifications. Uh, but, you know, they put her on a pedestal, put a little lipstick on her, and away she goes. Well, you know, you, you know, what you just what you just said is really the truth. You can put a little lipstick on a pig and make it look better. And in her case, it didn't help much because it didn't help her mind. <laughs> yeah, that, there you go. <laughs> Got to run, Adrian. God bless you. Merry Christmas, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, well, you have a good day. I guess we got a little bit of a little snow in my area over here. Yeah. I don't know about you, but uh, I guess not. And then it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but everybody drive careful out there and have a Merry Christmas. There you go. Thank you, Adrian. Appreciate it. Uh, this deal with uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and to think, and to think that this woman and others of her ilk... Uh, Ilhan Omar and the others of the Magnificent Four, some people call them, they're trying to tell us what to do. <laughs> oh, folks, I'll tell you what. We got trouble in River City, and it's not the trombone player coming down with the flu. I'll tell you that. Uh, Barry Equipment and Rental, Sales, Service, and Parts, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. And they got a big sandbox out behind to help you learn how to run the equipment. 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin and the Napa location. And they've got all, all the equipment to get the jobs done, all the lifting and digging and pushing and carrying and leveling and laying sod and grading. Oh, oh my gosh. They've got the Doosan wheel loaders and the excavators. they got all the bobcats. What are you waiting for? They're right. <laughs> There's that cough again. Aren't I blessed? Uh, they're waiting to serve you in Burley, Twin Falls, and Napa. Don't forget the best. Berry Equipment and Rental. You get a hold of them. Absolutely. Do it today. Caller, I'll be right there. I've got one other good word to talk about, and the only problem is I've got to find it first. I dropped it someplace here on the floor, and yours truly is looking for it. Ah, the lost is found. I'll be right with you. Don't forget Qualley's Electronics Christmas Sale. Talk to Bruce. They've got a dandy going on. Mm -hmm. Sale prices on their great selection of TVs, and they do have a great selection of TVs. They got, I don't know how many they got there, 50, 60, 70, 80 that are up on the walls or whatever all running you can see the pictures the screens the sizes everything it's really neat they got all the sound bars and audio equipment on sale prices and don't forget too you can get a hundred dollar gift card that's with a g gift card uh as a new customer activation of dish network oh my hometown service and support at Qualley's electronics christmas sale 1730 kimberly road in twin falls tell them i sent you absolutely good morning you're on the air Hey, Zen, how are you? I'm good, sir. Thank you. Good, good. Hey, I just was listening to your report uh, from uh, back east in Queens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one thing that I've found that is typical of this situation, it's a lack of responsibility. It's a lack of work ethic. And it's... Uh, tons of hypocrisy and uh I, and, you, and you can go any place and you'll find this same thing you when you always find this this unkept not taking care of things more of the entitlement this is the results you get yep doesn't matter what part of the country you go to if you this 
cases were that you find the lack of responsibility. Well, let me ask you this, and I'm sure you followed this. Remember not that long ago there was huge criticism heaped upon the city of Baltimore because of their filthy conditions, etc., and the rats were taking over in most sections of the city, and Trump and his administration were denounced because they brought it up. Well, the fact is in the pudding. Number one, I know people that live back there. Number two, they verified how bad and rat-infested and filthy it is. So why can't we today call a spade a spade? Tell me that. Um, well, I can't. I can tell you that. I, I don't have a problem calling spade a spade. What other people, why they don't have, why they have a problem with that, I'm not sure. They, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if they're trying to stay out of trouble by the mob. I don't know exactly. But uh, I can connect the dots. It's not a problem. I can tell you one thing, and I really do appreciate your phone call, but I can tell you one thing that's going on in our society, and I'd like to take my Tony Lama boot and raise it up about seven inches and stomp it, and that's political correctness. Our society, our American society and our culture, is being destroyed by these idiots, and that's what they are. They're destitute of any value that are out preaching political correctness, and I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm going to suggest a thought here, Zeb. Let's, let's not call that political correctness. Let's call that political incorrectness. Very good. Because that's really what it is. Very good. You know, to be preached to... And, and she'll get up on television or radio or newspaper and come out with her diatribe. And let's use this as an instance. De demeaning and condemning the cattle industry and agriculture in general in this United States. May I ask you, sir, what other country... What other country in the world can produce the food with the quality that we do here that feeds the world? And then you've got a congresswoman that is so damn dumb she doesn't understand that? Oh, yeah. But there is no other country. This is the prize right here, this country. Absolutely. And for people to say that we've got to regress, and she even made comments, and I don't have it right in front of me, about, well, most people should grow their own food in their little boxes in their window. I mean, this shows you that she should still be tending bar unless she's forgot how to make a rum and coke. <laughs> well, you know, another thing that goes along with this is this carbon credits, and they've been preaching this for, for years, and, and it's big business. And, uh, you know, what a lot of people don't recognize is that we are carbon-based. Carbon, -based. carbon is, is equal to food. Yep. And uh, so when they're trying to control the carbon, you know, that's another way in which they're trying to get in and control your food. Supply. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, for one, as long as I'm on this program, as long as God gives me the ability to turn on a microphone switch, and as long as my advertisers stay with me, I'm going to come out and tell it like it is on these subjects and keep on fighting. And I need help from people like you. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas to you, Zeb, and rock on. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Caller, I'll be right with you. I've got to tell everybody that if you want to have a great Christmas, make it a sportsman's warehouse Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. I was in there the other day, and I'm telling you, they got some real in-store specials for your Christmas shopping. Listen to this at Sportsman's Warehouse in Twin Falls. 25% off Gerber knives and tools. Oh, boy. I'm a knife collector. I love that kind of thing. And then of course, let's not forget, too, that they've got a Sportsman's Ultralight Packable Chair. You know, whether you're going camping or fishing or whatever, just twenty nine ninety nine. And I'm telling you, there are Superstore specials in Sportsman's Warehouse for your Christmas giving right now today. Stop in. And they're located at 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. Reese and the whole crew at Sportsman's Warehouse. Merry Christmas. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. I just got my radio turned on this morning. <clears throat> Talking about uh, AOC wanting people to grow their own food in a in a uh, in a garden box. Yeah. Well, she obviously she didn't graduate high school or junior high because she would have learned that uh, planting plants isn't an instantaneous thing. You got to 
to let them germinate. They got to grow. They got to mature before you can harvest them. Yeah, but wait a minute, Riley. Kind of smart. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Riley. Isn't going to feed a family. Riley, wait a minute. Say that part over again. They got to grow and say that again. I want to hear those words one more time. I I want to make a comment. Go ahead one more time. Well, they plant the seed. They got to grow and mature and and get ready to harvest, and, and it takes time to do such a thing. Well, the reason I asked you to repeat that, it almost sounded like at the beginning you were talking about the maturation process of politicians. they got to grow and mature, too, and she's not doing it. Well, that's something that had crossed my mind, but <laughs> I was just trying to go for a common-sense deal here. Maybe somebody that thinks she's all great could possibly try and follow as simply as possible. I'm a simple man, so I try to keep it simple. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate... Out, it doesn't take one day or two days to grow a potato, then there's not much hope for you in the line of farming now, is there? Well, the thing that scares me, Riley, and you're a sharp young guy, and the thing that scares me about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, we can't just say, oh, well, she's just a bartender. We can't just slough her off, and I'm telling you why. Because she is creating a following of NRBs. You know what an NRB is. It's not real bright. And she's got a following of NRBs back on the East Coast that are spreading across the country. And these not real bright people, they're starting to have a voice and they're starting to create more problems. And we better take care of this problem now before it gets too big. My thing about her is she's got a following of guineas. Yeah, and that's true. what a lot of these left-leaning people are. Give me, give yeah. me, give me, give me, give me this, give me that. I deserve. It's my right. Bull crap. It ain't your right. You don't deserve it because you didn't get up and earn it. Once you earn it, then it's your right to have it. Amen. You know Amen. You just got to whack or walk, Jack. I mean, it's just the way life is. Well, Alexandria Casio Cortez. Me about uh, those politicians talking about how capitalism is ruining our nation. Well. Somebody missed a couple courses in history in, in their lifetime, maybe the whole daggum class, because uh, that's what kept us going. <laughs> Somebody missed more than just a couple of classes, let me tell you, buddy. Hey, Riley, God bless you, and Merry, Merry Christmas. I always look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. All right, take care. Missed a couple of classes is right. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, honestly, uh, I wish it was possible to find out more about her and her intellect, her education. Uh, I mean, really, where does she come up with some of these wild-haired, stupid, stupid comments? I mean, uh, demeaning agriculture and going after us for wanting to go and be with families on holidays well that's environmentally not friendly you better stay at home maybe just call them on your cell phone oh my goodness and then she's from the filthiest sleaziest district in new york hmm go figure Right now, let's have the weather forecast real quick. I can tell you what it is here, Snow. Uh, I want to remind you that you need to hear everything that's going on around you this Christmas holiday season. And I urge you to call Mount Harrison Audiology and, of course, Hearing Aids and let them them serve you with a hearing test to make sure everything's going okay absolutely number to call 312-0957 that number again 312-0957 mount harrison audiology and hearing aids waiting right now to serve you right behind the minidoka hospital across from the emergency room you call them today here's gina with the weather Looks like we're expecting some rain and or snow over the next couple of days. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit breezy out of the west at about 10 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour, looking at a high of 43. Tonight, snow showers are possible mixed with rain, especially in the valley. Steady temperatures is about 39, and it's going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tomorrow, rain and snow mixed, expecting a high of 45 by tomorrow night. 
Rain and snow likely. More snow showers up in the higher elevations. Low of 32. Going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 40 miles an hour. For Friday, rain and snow mixed with a high of 41. And it's going to be breezy as well. That's going to continue for Friday night. New snow accumulations anywhere from 1 to 2 inches possible with a low of 25. And by the weekend, looks like mostly cloudy skies. 20% chance of snow showers in the forecast. Highs are going to be in the low 30s. Lows right around 20. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. Appreciate it, Gina. Thank you, thank you. And uh, you know what? You can give a great gift to your loved one that's having a little trouble hearing. Make sure that you get them over for a diagnostic test at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Yep, make the appointment, 312-0957. That number again, 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology, bringing you the weather. It, you know, do you ever get to the point, honestly, uh, don't be so prim and proper, especially not on this program. Do you ever get to the point where you just want to say, sir or madam, sit down and shut up? Do you ever have that happen? Seriously. Democratic Representative Karen Bass in California has come out yesterday, and she said, listen to this. This has just got the hair on the back of my neck standing up. I'm so mad. She would push to impeach President Donald Trump again if he wins the presidential election in 2020. This is the lunacy. This is the complete incompetency. This is the arrogancy of the NRBs, the not real brights. The Democrats, I honest to gosh, I've never seen a party that is so hell-bent on using a bent barrel pistol and pull the trigger and shoot themselves. And to come out and say that uh, we could go get his bank records and we can find out that he's owned. Listen to this. We can find out that Donald Trump is owned 100% by the Russians. Now, there's an allegation that ought to just make you cringe with the thought that there's a lot of dummies that are involved in our Congress and our Senate. But to come right out and say, well, I'll tell you what, if President Trump is reelected in 2020, why, I'm going to push for more impeachment procedures. And she says, I think we can find all kinds of evidence to impeach him and impeach him and impeach him. And Texas Democrat, oh, there's a guy with a face that only his mom and dad could love because he looks honestly like he's out of a 1937 horror movie. Representative Al Green said that Democrats could and should impeach President Trump multiple times. Haven't we got better things to do? Haven't we got bigger fish to fry? Haven't we got a lot of things that could be done for the sake of our country, our kids, our education system? Oh, yeah. And along with every other problem, haven't we got a lot of better things to do than listen to these NRBs, not real brights, Karen Bass and people like Al Green saying, why, we're going to impeach him multiple times. It's all out of hatred. It's all out of hatred and jealousy. Because the Democrats, they're like the taxi squad trying to beat the A-team, the varsity. And the Democrats just aren't going to be able to cut the cake. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Call her real quick. I've got two minutes, and then i got to wrap it up for this hour. Go ahead. Yeah, I look at the Democrat Party and the way they're trying to impeach President Trump 
as a chess game, and they're all playing with pawns, and they're not looking to the person who's pushing them around the board. I'll talk to you later. Okay, Riley, thank you. Appreciate that. Hey, while I'm waiting for the next call, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. They've got all the tires, all the tread design, all the sizes for whatever the weather throws at you. And I think right now here on in my little cell phone, it says we're getting some freezing rain. Oh, good. That's great for a guy on crutches. And then turning the snow or whatever. My goodness. Well, they've got all the tires for you at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, mm-hmm. along with the tire chains. wonder if I can put some tire chains on the bottom of my crutch tips. Never thought about that. And, of course, they've got the best in brake service and front-end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. Oh, yeah. Colder temperatures, you better make sure you got a good battery. They've got the best. All of this and more with the best in service at Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. The best, absolutely. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Uh, what have we got coming up next hour? We are going to be giving away ham, compliments of Zeb at the Ranch, and your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Don't forget that. And you can redeem those certificates at your Smith's Foods in Burley and Twin Falls. We're going to be giving that away next hour. We've got Dave Bego and a gentleman by the name of Eric Mitchell coming up this next hour. And uh, we just want to sit back and wish you and your family, and we're going to do this every day, even though the naysayers don't like it, We're going to ring the bells. Some people have said they didn't like that. And we're going to shout Merry Christmas to everybody. Some people have said they didn't like that. So, in honor of their wishes, Merry Christmas! We'll be back in seven minutes. Oh, we're getting some angel dandruff out there. Snowing. Look out. Good morning. Zeb at the ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with the best of tires for winter driving conditions. And our thanks to Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And, of course, Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Seniors living the good life with friends. Right now, Old Wheels is like a vulture with his finger above the button for Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho We're all in the Georgia circle Western Waste, service, please be care of our community Our resources and this free land Okay, here's the deal. We're, what, uh, about, uh, what, 15, 14 days away from Christmas, and you've got all the relatives coming in this year. You're going to have all kinds of garbage. You're going to have all kinds of waste paper. Oh, my goodness sakes, you better get on the route service. Call Western Waste Services right now. Tell them where you live. Say, please help. Put us on the route service. Call them at 734-6969. They are all was at your disposal, Western Waste Services. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, too, don't forget our friends at Qualys Electronics. They've got a great big Christmas sale going on. Oh, my. And when Bruce has a big sale, it's a dandy. And they're going to have low, low prices on a lot of great items, sale prices on their great selection of television sets, sound bars, and audio equipment. And they're going to have wireless and Bluetooth speakers. Say that fast five times. Wireless and Bluetooth speakers on sale. Oh, my goodness. Hometown service and support. They are good at what they do. Qualys Electronics Christmas Sale, 1730 Kimberly Road in Twin, and they wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Wheels, do you hear that static on the line coming up again this morning? I just thought I'd better check with you. I don't, sir. Well, put your headsets on. Okay. (laughs) I'm just kidding, Wheels. 
See if you can find out what it might be. Uh, let's also remind you, too, about our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I was in there the other day, and I think Nick absolutely delights in watching me cringe maybe just a little bit or perhaps more than a little bit, and, but it's working. It's really helping. I mean, I've got a leg that's starting to kind of croak on me a little bit in the muscles, and he has done an amazing job, as do all the physical therapists over there at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Number to call, make an appointment, please do it. You'll be happy you did. 678-1191. That number again, 678-1191. They do help you get back to being you. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. One more word. One more, said the man before he goes to the telephone caller. I want to remind Mind you about Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. Joel Heward, family, staff, serving you and your family at one of the most critical times in life when there's the passing of a loved one. Believe me, they really believe that every life is worth remembering and they want to make sure that they provide your family with the best possible support and comfort. Always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. Please remember the number and the name, Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636. And Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Well, we got to do this right. Merry Christmas, Dave Beagle. How are you? Oh, Merry Christmas to you. I'm fine, but I have a question for you. Oh, goody. So, listening to you, are you a frog? What do you mean I'm a frog? Well, you said you croak. (laughs) Oh, Beagle, you're too old for that. Okay. (laughs) You've been sipping the bubbly a little bit this morning, have you? (laughs) No, I have not. Uh, Put the cork back in it. Okay, hey, listen, how are you anyway? Yeah, doing good. Just uh, cold here. It was 20 degrees when we got up this morning. I think it's about 22 now. Oh, my Uh, goodness. Almost as cold as the heart of the Democratic Party. Uh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly. You know, uh, I was, uh, you know, I watched this and read stuff on it, and then I I saw Ted Cruz this morning on TV, and he said, uh, you know, uh, their their articles of impeachment are, are, are nothing there is uh, illegal or bad. He says the only reason they're doing this is because uh, their their political sense differs from the Republicans, and that's all this is. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, and besides that, uh, they're spoiled brats that can't take or accept the 2016 election. Mm-hmm. That's it. And, uh, and they're afraid about the 200... 2020 election because they're afraid they're going to lose it and behind the scenes and I saw this on uh, and I'm trying to remember uh, I saw it on another show last night um, and um, the um, it was on a Fox show the announcer said you know the the big reason all this is happening is behind the scene the unions are controlling uh, the Democrats and the media I believe I believe that was uh, oh my goodness a longtime journalist with uh, many networks besides Fox uh, all of a sudden his name escapes me Brit Hume Brit Hume I yeah, saw the Brit same Hume. it was Brit Hume and he's a hundred percent right. He is 100% right, because this is all about uh, getting the Democrats back in power, um, uh, you know, in the White House and uh, the Senate and controlling the House and uh, uh, so that they can uh, get all these regulations and laws back in place where they can force unionize people. That's what this is all about. You know, Dave, let me ask you about that. Uh, when you talk about forced unionization and uh, the unions being really heavy with the Democrats, etc., what are, because of your past experiences with unions and how you had to fight them to survive, literally, what are your biggest fears that may happen with unions over the next 12 months? Well, I think we're going to see, and if people read my book, The Devil at Our Doorstep, all the tactics they use against me and my company and my customers, my employees, you know, they're, they're, they're 
similar to things we're seeing, uh, you know, being used against the president and the Republican Party, and it's going to get even worse um, because uh, as they get closer to things, they um, uh, they get even more aggressive, and uh, we're going to see these things happen. The American people need to understand this, and uh, and uh, and one thing, it's it's not all unions. It's just a certain group of unions that have lost their way, and. Uh, um, they're, they're some of the biggest unions in the country, and and uh, it's all about them. It isn't about uh, the American people or even their members. You know, a lot of the members, like the UAW, I mean, the membership is really fighting the UAW because the UAW um, um, executives have been, um, you know, fined and, uh, and are, are going to face lawsuits on uh, uh, taking the money and using it for the wrong things uh, from the membership, and uh, and the membership is not happy with them. Yeah. Let me ask you this. It's such a simple question, but we don't hear hardly any of the journalists on TV or the newspaper ever ask these questions, but really, here it is. Okay. You're going to impeach Donald Trump as the 45th president of the United States. Okay. Would you please lay out for me the crimes that have been definitive against him so that we can look at these crimes and really follow this impeachment? They can't give you an answer to that, David, because there are no crimes that have been assessed. You know, this... Huh? I said there's no crimes that have been assessed to him. They just come after you and they just throw things out there and they try to brainwash the American people that, you know, this person's bad, these people are bad, and uh, we need to go after them and uh, we need to bring them down. And, uh, you know, it's the same thing they did against me and, and uh, um, my companies and that. You know, they said we were bad, we treat people bad, we were racist, and just all kinds of stuff. And, uh, I mean, and, and here behind the scenes, what people don't understand is they would follow our people home at night after they got off work and uh, knock on their doors and push in their ways in the house and, and intimidate and threaten these people. And, you know, these people are hypocrites. See, they, they say one thing, but they do other things that are worse. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. When you talk about uh, the, the mess that's been stirred up right now, there is a big stick and it's in a bowl, and in that bowl is a bunch of mud. And right now, with the IG report, with over 20 misdoings by the FBI, and Attorney General Bill Barr saying that the FBI has inexplicable behavior that they need to answer for, and people like Brennan with the CIA, Comey with the FBI. I'm telling you something, David. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I think that the ruination, destruction, and I'm saying good riddance to the Democratic Party before June 1st next year. Well, it could happen. There are, you know, American people are waking up, and there's a lot of Democrats that are not happy with uh, what the left side of the Democratic Party's done. And, um, it's, uh, but you, you have these people that, uh, Zeb, I've said this many times, uh, the far left, they don't believe in capitalism and uh, uh, free markets. Uh, they believe in socialism and, and communism, and that's what they want to do and bring this country down. And, uh, you know, what they don't, that they don't understand, and you look around the country, but socialism and some of the things like the Green New Deal are economically impossible. They don't work. They don't good, do good things for the people at, at any level. And, um, in fact, these nations become very poor, and the people become even poorer and desperate. They don't seem to care. I mean, they have an allegiance to a person that hates this country, many of which belong to the George Soros Foundation and his disciples of hatred against the red, white, and blue. I just don't understand how anybody that is living in this country under the flag of the United States, red, white, and blue, how they can sit there with so much hate and disdain for this, the best country ever on the face of God's earth. I just don't understand it. Well, because they're naive people, uh, Zeb, and they, um, you know, they listen to these people like Soros and the unions and the people on the far left and, uh, and saying, well, you know, you're not being taken care of enough, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that, you know, whether it's health care or free college. Um, 
you know, more entitlement programs and all that kind of stuff. And these people will go, yeah, that's what's right. That's what makes sense. That's why this country is not good. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh, already, already, I don't know if you heard about this story or not, but yesterday, Democratic representative from California, Karen Bass, she came out and she said, quote, she would push to impeach President Donald Trump again if he wins the election in 2020. They're not going to quit. They're not smart enough to understand they're up against a brick wall. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's what they're doing. And uh, they're just scared to death of um, this 2020 election. Like I say, these things are going to get worse. What they say they're going to do and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, when you look at California, unfortunately, um, it has really fallen apart. I mean, so many businesses are leaving California. Yeah. People are leaving California. Uh, because of uh, the regulations and the laws and the taxes and everything, and you look at California, it's uh, th- that state is basically controlled by the unions, and uh, they're putting into place things they want. And if people really want to look at what this country is going to become uh, look like, look at California, well, or look at New York and the district that elected Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. She, like I said, first hour has been coming out and damning and condemning agriculture she's been damning and condemning the meat industry she's been damning and condemning anybody that comes out and wants to buy a plane ticket to go see aunt martha and uncle fred she's been damning and condemning any of us that want to get together with family gatherings at thanksgiving because we might have to drive 25 miles but at the same time she comes from the sleaziest filthiest most denigrated district in new york queens new york and she is a hip Correct. Yes, she is, and this is this is what I try and tell people all the time. They are hypocrites. Uh, they say one thing and do another, and uh, they really don't care about the people. It's all about them, and uh, that's what the uh, the left, uh, the Democrats, need to wake up and understand. And um, you know, like I say, in the union, some of these big unions that uh, the the membership is not happy. Again, like the UAW, because all of their embezzlement scandal by the executives um, and their political bent, because a lot of the uh, UAW workers uh, don't don't believe in the Democratic Party and the left. I mean, I don't know if you remember me telling you, but uh, I helped get right to work passed in Michigan because mm-hmm. uh, uh, employees at a Ford plant who were UAW members, they read my book, first book, and they called me and they said, we read your book, plus we heard you got uh, right to work passed in Indiana. Please help us get right to work passed in Michigan, because we're tired of the union bosses and uh, how they control us and their political bent and uh, how well they use our membership dues for their own pocketbook. I mean, it just went on and on. And uh, this is what um, the, uh, the Democrats that are, uh, you know, in line with america need to wake up and understand you know really what do you think is going to happen i mean we sit here and we can say okay the democrats they started impeachment proceedings they've got their articles of impeachment and they're going after donald trump and at the same time these hypocrites nancy pelosi and the pencil neck and everybody else they sit down and they sign in accordance with the gop and the trump administration the usmca trade agreement but you know, I'll bet you apples to bird seed that the Democrats and Pelosi are going to stand there in front of the cameras today and they're going to say, look what we did. We altered it. We changed it. And we forced Trump to sign it. It was his idea in the first place. Yeah, this is what they do. And, uh, you know, uh, and this is another thing I want to go back to because I haven't talked about this for a while or said it for a while. This is why we need term limits because yeah, we got to get these people that they go to uh, – you know, uh, get into politics and go to Washington, D.C. and that, and they're there for a couple terms, and they do good things for the American people in this great country, and then they go back to work in the private sector. That would make a huge difference in moving this country forward. But can you imagine at Christmas time in California, in Sacramento, going to a Walmart, and there stands unemployed Nancy Pelosi as a greeter? <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't because you know her husband makes millions of dollars, and uh, uh, his uh, 
company behind the scenes, which she got uh, uh, bills passed years ago to help him uh, be successful. And uh, so she she just she wouldn't do anything anymore. But uh, too many people uh, stay in um, politics, and uh, you know, just term after term after term, because they really don't want to go out and work in the. Uh, private sector and move forward and have to work harder and do the right thing. Absolutely. Hey, one other thing that is very disturbing to me, and I'm serious when I say this, dead pan serious, is what happened at Pensacola Naval Station. And then this morning, early this morning, we heard that Corpus Christi Naval Station was on a lockdown. I'm hoping that what's happening with our naval stations and armed service bases is not going to become a trend. Your comments. Yeah, me too. And uh, it's sad, but you know, uh, the one in Pensacola was obviously uh, a um, Islamic uh, ba- backing. And, yep. uh, um, you know, our country really has to look at the people that have been let into this country. And, uh, and this person, I don't know if you saw it this morning, but he actually um, legally got a gun by uh, some type of, uh, and I haven't had a chance to really read it, but some type of uh, legal mm-hmm. uh, sidestepping. Right. And, um, you know, we, you know, I don't think we should control guns, but we ought to make sure that anybody that goes in to buy one is a good person, has a good background, has the right credentials to be able to buy the gun. But conversely, on the other side of that story, it's ludicrous to me to think that our pilots, our pilots are being tra- taught uh, how to fly and teach the Saudi Arabians or anybody else and on the base they don't have any method of protection they they can't have a gun and i absolutely think our citizenry our military needs to have weapons so that this problem that occurred at uh, Pensacola would not have been as exacerbated as it was well i agree with you and uh you know that's what our founders understood and everything, and uh, but uh, we got too many people in this country that uh, don't understand it, and it's it's one of the things that they're against. And uh, um, but uh, like I say, this this gunman in Pensacola shooting got his weapon under a legal exception. Yeah, uh, I think it was under some kind of a clause regarding hunting here in the United States or something. I'm not exactly sure of uh, the entirety of this, but there was a loophole that gave him the opportunity to have a weapon. Yeah, you know, um, you know it's uh, it's sad, and uh, you know they they need to uh, check into this more. You know, one other thing... Uh, you know, even state officials of Florida are now calling this uh, exception a loophole. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one other thing that we don't get a chance to talk about very much, and that's, of course, your family, my family, friends for years, and and uh, great uh, having you on the program. I certainly want to take just a moment here to extend to you and yours the merriest of Christmases. You've always been such a great guy to this program, and uh, I just wish you the best. Well, the same with you and what you do, Zeb. I really appreciate it, and uh, hope you have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy New Year. Yeah, I know, and you're going to bring up, uh, even with all the kind remarks, I know you're going to say that I still owe you a plain load of wine. So go ahead, get it out of the way. When's the plane going to (laughs) land? It can't even take off. It's overburdened. Oh, God bless you. No, there you go. Hey, God bless you, man. Merry Christmas, Dave Beagle. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Good guy. That's how you can classify him. Good guy, Dave Beagle. Thank you very much. Hey, by the way, don't forget, there's that cough again. Anderson Farms and Jones Commodities want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a terrific 2020 New Year. And uh, by the way, if you're looking for an employment change for this next year, 2020, Anderson Farms and Jones Commodity hiring. You better get a hold of them today. Call Lon at 878-2816 or 878-2820. Merry Christmas from Anderson Farms and Jones Commodities. He's absolutely. Let's see. Oh, and I've got to tell you this. My buddy Reese. Mm-hmm. 
over at Sportsman's Warehouse. You can make it a Sportsman's Christmas. Oh, my goodness sakes. They've got everything in there. Uh, they've got a Boyd single long gun case, just ninety nine ninety nine. It was regularly one sixty nine ninety nine. dollars 99 Whoa, ho, ho. save money. And they've got the Nikon Monarch binoculars that were two ninety nine ninety nine. now just two sixty nine ninety nine. Oh, boy. Better get into Sportsman's Warehouse. Nike. 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. And like I keep telling you, uh, they've got all kinds of great stocking stuffers, too. Like they've got the Howard Late uh, Hearing and Eye Protection, and it's 20% off. You better check that out. My goodness. Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. Merry Sportsman's Christmas. I bit my tongue just a minute ago, if you didn't notice that. And it hurts. Uh, I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Oh, boy. Todd and the whole crew uh, wish you a very Merry Christmas. Boy, it looks like Christmas outside my window. A lot of angel dandruff falling out there. And uh, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more. They're very thoughtful and devoted to serving you. All you really need to do is pick up the phone, dial the number, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert, serving you. And by the way, if you're over there, uh, just a minute, I almost lost my cough drop. <laughs> I tell you what, i got to get rid of this cough. Don't forget our friends at Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. My goodness, snow, snow, snow. And they've got all the snowmobiles and the snow bikes and all the accessories. I do not know how they got everything crammed into that showroom floor, but it is chock full of fun. Stop over there at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. And don't forget, they're going to be closing at noon on uh, Christmas Eve and stay closed uh, through the 26th. That's it. Let's ride where the fun is so do you get over there today let me see if i got another good word i've got to take in before yes i do before i get my caller on here i am dictated to by the log and all of our wonderful advertisers and i want to remind you too about lee's furniture floors and more hello jeff and the crew over there at lee's furniture floors and more holy smokes that is the place for you to go christmas shopping why they've just brought in all kinds of new recliners i'm not kidding you that is is the recliner headquarters for the world right there. I think one of the largest selections you'll find anywhere. And you got to go in and try a recliner on. Seriously. Uh, they've got them for short people. They've got them for tall people. They've got them for real skinny people. And they've got them for people like me. Anyway, stop in and check out all the buys on the furniture, all the floor coverings, all the tile, all the carpet, everything for the beautification and the comfortization, I love saying that, at Lee's Furniture Floors and More, 459 Overland in Burley, and they wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Let's go to the phone line right now, and we have United States Marine Corps retired and the CEO of Life Flip Media, Eric Mitchell. How are you, my friend? Good to have you on the program. I'm great. How are you doing this uh, wonderful Wednesday? If I was any better, I couldn't stand it, Eric. Tell us a little bit about your Life Flip Media. What does that mean? Well, Life with Media was created after I spent 10 years in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, love serving our country. I come from a long line of uh, service members, uh, which is pretty cool coming from the fact that only 3% of America served this country. It's cool that I come from one of those lineages of service members, and my youngest brother just got done serving the Marine Corps after eight years. So uh, I created Life with Media when I came out. Uh, it's random becoming getting into the media world coming from a Marine Corps background where I was an infantryman. Uh, so it kind of flipped my life all the way around. I ended up working in the Silicon Valley, created Life with Media, and was the voice of reasoning, kind of bringing the attention to the big Silicon Valley firms, why you should hire veterans and 
started that movement that it's great to see in 2019, almost 2020, that folks are starting to, we need to start hiring more veterans and how great employees we make. And that age-old adage of when you look at a resume and you're like, well, where did you spend your last four years? Why didn't you have a job? It kind of brings the, we actually learn a lot when we're in during our four to eight to ten to a lifetime career. When we get out, we're pretty qualified and we'll probably show up and do a better job than most folks. Absolutely. Boy, that was a great dissertation. I stand and salute you, sir. That was well stated. Uh, what's the status today, in your opinion? There's a lot of things I want to talk to you about here this morning. But what's the status of our service members today as compared to, let's say, five years ago? Are things better? Uh, I wish I could say they were, but they're... I mean, the president, for active duty, I will say absolutely. Uh, we finally got a pay raise, which was great. Uh, there's still some issues. I mean, keep in mind, a lot of our base housing needs to be updated. We're putting our service members and their families in homes that are full of, you know, lead paint and all these things. So these homes were built a long time ago. So it's good to see the current president, you know, doing a great job making sure our military is taken care of. And to start not just giving us the best weapons to make us the finest military, but we need to have our bases you know, where we're living, where we're putting our family members, we need to be taken care of. And those homes from the 50s and 60s, yes, they're great to live in, but there needs to be some fixes. Thank goodness President Trump has been the first president to do that in a long time. Now, on the veteran side of the house, there's a lot of work to still be done. Uh, unfortunately, we, if you've heard from one veteran, you heard from all, most VAs are horrible, and we still have, unfortunately, we're losing 20-plus brothers and sisters uh, in arms daily to veteran suicide. It is mm. still, I still think that's an issue that needs to be bumped to the front of the line uh, instead of so many other issues. I definitely think this that's a matter that needs to be dealt with. Eric, I, the simplistic way of asking this question is just with a three-letter word. Why? Why are there so many suicides? Why is this problem not being addressed? And how can it be curtailed? Uh the why? I mean, PTSD is a beast. Uh, you got to think about it. We've been, uh, you know, our other, I'm not down, well, what I'm going to say is this. I'm not going to downplay the Vietnam War and its link, World War II, World War One, Korea. What I'm going to say is we have been at war for 19 years, if you include Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, when you put that together, that's a lot of time in service. A lot of our guys are serving three, four tours in heavy combat zones. They come home and they're not given the medical attention they should be. I have personally been next to a veteran attempting to make a phone call for a mental health checkup. They were not feeling right in the head. They were told to come in in six weeks. Oh if you're feeling suicidal and somebody on the other line of the phone and a doctor is telling you, I'll come in in six weeks, there's where we have this breakdown, and we've always had it because the VA just kind of lives in its own little world, and they really don't get a grip of what's going on in a service member's mind, we've always treated this PTSD as this thing nobody wants to talk about. Oh, and you always hear the comment, and I hear it a lot from friends who have it. They get told, well, you don't look like you have PTSD. Mm -hmm. Because so many other diseases that we have in our country and things that we see, no one understands mental disorders. And, you know, we still elevate these guys in the NBA, and, and no knock on Kevin Love, but Kevin Love did bring it up in the NBA that he has a mental disorder. But we still don't treat mental disorders like we treat like cancer and other things. And we're, I, I wish I had an answer to what solves it. It's more bringing and having people speak out and say, hey, I want this result. I mean, we've spent a lot of time focusing in on impeachment where I look at that money should be spent towards, you know, getting my veterans to not die every day. And it's our Vietnam veterans that are we're losing at an alarming clip. And to me, that's an ultimate backhanded slap in the face because yeah, think about it. Those gentlemen and ladies came back from war, and they were spit on. And now we're losing them at an alarming rate. And then we still have our folks that are still coming back from 19 years of war. It's it's far from over, and we need to make it a bigger issue because it's an alarming amount of people dying every day. 
Boy, that was well stated, Eric. Uh, let me ask you this, and I'm going to kind of retract a little bit what you just said, and I want to elaborate a little bit more. I could tell by your verbiage that you are a Trump supporter. I could tell by your verbiage, and if I'm wrong, that you think it's high time Trump said what he said about getting out of Afghanistan and basically getting out a lot of the hot spots in the world, that we've been there for 15, 16, 17 years plus, and uh, no solving of any issues because we're not fighting to win. How would you respond to what I just said? I would agree with you 100%. Uh, I do uh, so support the president. Uh, I think he's done an amazing job when it comes to our country. Uh, he stood behind all of the things that he ran for election on. Uh, and this impeachment has done nothing but almost walk up a 2020 re-election. Uh, as when it comes to his stance on Afghanistan, I will say I think... It's good that he brings up getting us out of Afghanistan, because I don't know if you've reported it yet. It's largely gone unreported this morning. But for the last 12 hours in Afghanistan, there has been a firefight at Bingham Air Force Base. Yes. Uh, They have been getting attacked. Uh, The perimeter was breached. Uh, uh, Newsweek is reporting this, and there are some boots on the ground that are sharing this out on social. But you see how Afghanistan has almost become pushed down on the news feeds? Yes. Um, our mainstream media, and it's concerning because we've almost become numb to Iraq and Afghanistan. So I'm so happy that we have a president who's like, why don't we just leave? Because clearly nothing's going to change. The media is not going to report on it. Uh, Thank goodness we haven't lost anybody in in this fire fight that's been going on for these hours. But it's it's alarming to me that that used to be, would get pushed up in the news feed and be breaking news and people would talk about it. And now you almost have to go hunt for news out of Iraq and Afghanistan. So it's great to see President Trump wanting to get us out of there. I know people were soured on it when he pulled out of Syria also. But this is important that we get these guys home because this is a long... I mean, if you look at the history of Afghanistan, period, I mean, our, you know, the Russians went through the same thing in the 80s. So we're kind of living the same nightmare, and it's just going on and on and on. And it's just a cycle that these folks just like being at war with each other, and we're kind of just a mediator in the middle. And I don't want to lose anybody else coming back home because of this being the guy in the middle. So we can come home and everybody can enjoy being at home and not at war for a little bit. We, we've deserved it. We've, we've responded to 9-11 in a great factor. We've taken out the bad guys. And uh, we need to bring our boys back home. You know, Eric, you said so much that needs to be elaborated on in that last uh, paragraph, if you will. But number one, uh, it's a money trap. First of all, we've been involved over there for billions and billions and billions of dollars and all the loss of life. And please, somebody's got to tell me, what have we gained? What advantages have we gained? What benefits have we gained by being there? Because these warring factions in these countries, have been fighting and killing each other since Jesus walked the face of the earth. <laughs> you are so correct. Uh, I mean, you're talking to a Marine Corps veteran, so I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I did not get out and do private contracting, and it's something that uh, my brother was just talking to me about, about being stationed, you know, doing his uh, deployments overseas and seeing it firsthand how we bring these guys in, and it's just a gigantic money grab. It's That's what it is. At the end of the day, all these, you know, other folks, non-civilian, you know, the civilian type who are over there making, you know, $10,000 a month compared to a guy who's making 10 cents an hour as a, you know, Army or Marine or any one in our service. They're not making a whole, they're not making the same amount, trust me. And they're not living in the same conditions and they're not getting the, you know, daily phone calls and all those fun things that our contractors do. It's 100% a money grab and it needs to stop it we you know once we start making profits from war it becomes a, dis- a disgusting factor and i come from it from a veteran point of view and no i don't speak for every veteran in america but i do believe uh i've talked to enough that that i can say that we're over it we're not we don't join because of the money we do it because we believe in the mission of our country and what our job is to do and to see that these folks come over there and just make like you said I'm almost probably would bet that they probably made trillions uh, of dollars off of war, but we don't see a penny of it. And our guy, our guys and gals come home from war, and they come home to a hot mess where they can't even get satisfactory medical care. 
but yet these folks, these big companies come back from making all their money, and they're fine and dandy. Right? They're passing out huge bonuses to their leadership. Yeah. So it's a bit disgusting, and that's why I'm a big fan of getting our, uh, our troops out of there. And uh, those warring factions, they can go fight. They can continue doing what they've been doing, like you said, before Jesus was walking the earth. Those folks can go back to doing whatever it is that they're good at, and we can leave. Just don't attack our country. Eric, let me ask you this question, and uh, I don't know if you want to feel comfortable in answering this or not, but I'm going to ask it. I'm pretty blunt on this country, on this program. Uh, I look at this situation with the wilted flower Democrats that have got the combined IQ of a bicycle spoke standing up behind their podium saying they're going to do this, that, and the other with global warming, a Green New Deal, and they're going to do this, and they're going to try to change the world status of the United States that they say Trump has ruined and everything else, and they spent all this money on impeachment, wasted three years when that same time and effort could have been going to help our military our veterans, our homeless people in this United States. You don't suppose the United States public is dumb enough to vote any Democrat in in 2020, do you? <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I wholeheartedly believe America will re-elect uh, President Trump. Uh, he has delivered on it. He stands up for he stands up for the average Joe, and that's what I say. The rest of us are right. We're not politicians. We're not Nancy Pelosi and her Jurassic Park that just rolls out there to go and do what? They don't talk to America. When they're up there talking, they're not talking to America. They're talking to this small faction of people who don't like the president. Why don't they like the president? Because some person on some unnamed news network is going to act there and be all stunned and tell them don't like it. I mean, I just watched footage of one individual yesterday who made a big deal about a Trump tweet, and you would have think you would have thought he was losing his mind over it. I was like, okay, bad act. I, I definitely don't believe America is that gullible. I believe that they see that he's got a result. And yes, sometimes it may be a little difficult to stomach his tweet. But I'm not, I didn't vote for the man because of his tweeting ability. I voted for the man on his mission, how he stands up for my military and protects the country that I love and I've defended and so have generations of my family. And I, I'm just wishing all these people who said they were going to go to Canada uh, on November 9, 2016, they're still here. I wonder when they're going to leave because those are the ones that oppose the president. But they're still here. So they're actually benefiting from a strong economy and a great stock market. So I definitely, there's, and to add to this, I absolutely think there's zero candidates of the, what do they have, like 5,000 people running for one seat? Uh, <laughs> all these Dems running for president, they're horrible. I mean, just kind of put them all together and you're just like, that's the best you have? I mean, they come after our president for everything, but then you just watch Joe Biden in one week. I mean, come on, how creepy is that guy? So, let me go. Are really there. So let, let me. I definitely believe that the president will be reelected, and I actually believe we'll see it in the House. I believe that you'll see a lot of Dems lose their seats in the I House do too. because of this current witch hunt that is this impeachment hearing. People are sick of it. I mean, the TV ratings show it. I mean, it's just boring TV. Let me ask you one final thought here, and then I've got to run. I wish I had more time to talk to you. But I said last hour, and I made the statement that I'm very concerned about what I hope is not a trend that we're seeing, like what happened at Pensacola Naval Base, and again, a lockdown this morning at Corpus Christi, Texas Naval Base. What are your thoughts? I don't want to see this go any further. There better be something done to make sure this doesn't happen anywhere else. Uh, I believe that our service members should be armed on base. Uh, I know that there's been some opposition from the left on that, conveniently by people who've never bothered to pick up a weapon in their life nor serve their country. Uh, if we can't trust our military members to have their own their own weapon on them, then there's a problem that we have there. If our bases are being attacked, something needs to be done. If Saudis are going to sit outside of a gate and film what's being done and then be upset, how dare we not allow them on our base? I'm sorry. But we can't get, well, Saudi Arabia has a track record with our country, and it's not a very good one. I uh, guess they provide a lot of oil, but they also like flying into our buildings. So we kind of frown on that. And when they're here learning how to fly, we need to be protective of our military. It's our home turf. We should not have to worry on our home turf and on our bases where we get to live and enjoy our families. We should be protected on our bases. So we definitely need to do something. But, again, I could go on to a mission of we have 
we, we've hand tied all of our police officers in the country, and people are going to get offended if dare you do anything to somebody. I mean, I'm surprised they're not upset that we shot these terrorists that attacked Pensacola last Friday. Amen. So it, it, it blows my mind that we. We, we almost looked the other way. I said, okay, we can attack military bases. It must be a crazy military person. Well, the last two haven't been, so <laughs> a whole other matter. All I want to say to you, sir, is that you got to make a promise to me, and that promise is that when I call, you'll come back on my program. I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Absolutely. I'll come on anytime you want. Eric Mitchell, USMC retired, CEO of Life Flip Media. And I'll tell you what, I wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas to you also. All right, sir. Enjoyed him. And he's a straight shooter, tells it like it is. And that's what I respect on my program. Thank you very much. Eric Mitchell. Merry Christmas wishes from Magic Valley Irrigation mm -hmm. at 44 East, 500 South of Burley. Hello, Jeff and the crew at Magic Valley Irrigation, and they've been offering irrigation system service and repair since 1978. Really good folks that care about this season, and they wish you and your family Merry Christmas. Christmas. Magic Valley Carpet at 613 D Street in Rupert. Hello, folks. How are you? And they've got all your flooring needs. All you need to do is just give them a call. 436-1722. That number again, 436-1722. Magic Valley Carpet in Rupert. Merry, Merry Christmas. And seriously, a very good friend of this program. Doug's alternator and starter repair at 635 21st Street in Hayburn. And he says, please remember the true meaning of the season. Absolutely. And also remember the senior centers at this time of year. And don't forget, call Doug's alternator and starter repair at 431-5282 over in Hayburn. Doug's alternator and starter repair wishing you and yours a merry Merry Christmas. Got to go to the weather forecast. Uh, <laughs> angel dandruff falling outside. And the weather brought to you this hour by our friends at Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Oh, boy. These are the professionals. These are the people that know and can help you with your family business or your outside business and with the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, book keeping services, retirement planning, all of this and so much more. They have a staff of people that really know and really care. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. With offices in Burley and Rupert, you get a hold of them today. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Looks like we're expecting some rain and or snow over the next couple of days. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit breezy out of the west at about 10 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour. Looking at a high of 43 tonight. Snow showers are possible mixed with rain, especially in the valley. Steady temperatures is about 39, and it's going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tomorrow, rain and snow mixed. Expecting a high of 45 by tomorrow night. Rain and snow likely. More snow showers up in the higher elevations. Low of 32. Going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 40 miles an hour. For Friday, rain and snow mixed with a high of 41. And it's going to be breezy as well. That's going to continue for Friday night. New snow accumulations anywhere from 1 to 2 inches possible with a low of 25. And by the weekend, looks like mostly cloudy skies. 20% chance of snow showers in the forecast. Highs are going to be in the low 30s. Lows right around 20. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zephyr. Ah, my, 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 my. Sounds like we're going to get some precip and uh, drive carefully out there. Don't forget our weather brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. They care. They can help you, whether you're starting a business or a partnership or a corporation or you want to expand your business, please get a hold of them today. Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and company in Burley and Rupert. There you go. Uh, let's see what else have I got here real quick. Um, I want to give away a ham. I'm going to give away ham. Everybody kind of get closer to your radio and your telephone and get ready to dial. And uh, I would really like to say thank you uh, to the Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and 
us for putting together a ham program for you and your family. And if you don't want the ham and you know a needy family that may need it, just give it to them. What a gift. What a nice gift. And these uh, certificates are redeemable at your Smith's Food King and Burley or Twin Falls. Really nice people helping us out. So thanks again to Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, Zeb at the Ranch, providing you a Christmas ham. Now here is a question. And the first person to call with the right answer is going to receive the ham. Three three of Santa's reindeer's names begin with the letter D. D. Name them quickly. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. First person to call with the right answer. Three of Santa's reindeer's names begin with the letter D. Holy cow! That was fast. You must have that telephone glued to your finger. Good morning. You're on the air. What are the answers? Dasher, Dancer, and Daughter. Who is this? Red Orange. Uh, say the name again, please, slowly. I didn't get it all. Brett Gorange. Brett Gorange. Holy smokes, you do know your reindeer, Brett. I'll tell you that. I had to think about that one. Dancer, Dasher, and Donner. And what we're going to do is ask you to stay on the line. Wheels is going to get your address. We'll mail your certificate so you can go into Smith's Food and redeem it for a ham, okay? Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to you. God bless you, man. Thanks. Well, he had that answer. <laughs> wow. I didn't have a clue. As I, I came up with Dan or, or uh, Dancer, and I had trouble with the other two. And old Brett, he's right there, Johnny, on the spot, and had the winner. Wow. All right, we'll give another ham away tomorrow. So there you go. Compliments of our dear friends at Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center, Zepp at the Ranch, and our thanks also to Smith's Food King. Thank you very much. Got one more good word I've got to get in this hour, and uh, you can tell when I say that. I'm always searching for the copy. I want to remind you that uh, CBDs help work with our systems in the healing process. Do You didn't know that? Well, I'm uh, going to say a word here that I hope I say it correctly. When your endocannabinoid system is healthy, whew, hope I said that right, you may find you sleep better, your moods are more regulated, your nervous system processes pain normally and everything, and your digestive system works better. Well, find out more about CBDs at American Shaman at 1259 Overland Avenue in Burley. And believe me, they are open Monday through Friday, 10 to 5, and they are open for you and your better health. Stay healthier through cold and flu season find out more about cbd american shaman in burley at 1259 overland waiting to serve you okay coming up next hour hold on i gotta make a check mark here or i'm not gonna remember that coming up next hour we've got michael fisher at 1006 talking about the homeless problem in our country and then dan perkins really really good political analyst at 10:30. so we got a bunch of heavy hitters coming up this next hour and on behalf of deanne and i merry christmas wheels take us away to the news Well, good morning. As we sit here looking out the window, as the angel dandruff falls, good morning, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And, of course, brought to you by, this morning, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations with the best of tires to get you through all your wintertime driving. Stop in and see them today. Along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And, of course, our friends at Greystone Crossing, senior living on Alfresco Road. That's 21st Street, just about a mile east of Walmart. You be sure and stop in and give them a call. Here's what I want you to do, seniors, and I really mean this. 
It's a beautiful facility, 12-bedroom home, and you get three meals a day. You get snacks and housekeeping, local transportation. I'm telling you, seniors, you need to find out more. This is a beautiful, brand-new facility built by Matt and Kelly Wiggins, and the number to call to have an appointment to look it over, 650-4979. That number again, 650-4979, and they'll show you all around great Stone Crossing Senior Living, and they're located at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Seniors living the good life with friends. Want to also extend some Merry Christmas wishes from Senator Kelly Anthon, District 27. Hello, Kelly. There's a man that really cares. There's a man that really gets into his work of serving his constituents, and he and his family want to extend to you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Senator Kelly Anthon, thank you very much. Another man that has worked for us for a long, long time in this area and represents District 27 Seat B and that, of course, Representative Fred Wood. Fred really cares, and it shows because he's so diligent in studying all the issues and helping and serving you. Representative Fred Wood, wishing you and yours a very Merry Christmas. And a gentleman that is a real-life John Wayne, lives up in Oakley, rancher, and of course, representative and Speaker of the House, Scott Bedke from District 27 CDA. He and his family simply put, they want you and your family to have the best of a very Merry Christmas and of course, Happy New Year. Thank you very much to all of these gentlemen. On behalf of Kelly Anthon, Fred Wood, and Speaker of the House, Scott Bedke, Merry, Merry Christmas. Right now, let's go to the phone line and uh, introduce a man that I don't think I've ever had on this program before, but I'm seriously looking forward to our conversation, and that's the community advocate and president of New York Central Park South Civic Association, Michael Fisher. Good morning, sir. How are you? Well, good. I'm doing just great, and good morning to you over in Rupert, Idaho. I wish I was there. It's like a great place. Well, I'll tell you something, Michael. I'm not actually in Rupert. I do it from a satellite studio built at my ranch over in Murtaugh, so you're kind of bouncing all over the place. I'm, 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 I guess I'm all over the world. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Wherever you want me to be, I'll be. How's that? Michael, tell me uh, the subject matter, and the reason I wanted you on the program is that you really can discuss what's going on or not going on with the homeless situation or the homeless epidemic in America today, and specifically back there in New York. How bad is it? Well, it's getting really, it's getting worse and worse and worse every day. And the, the real challenge that we have is that politicians just don't want to deal with it. They don't really want to deal with the issue, and they kind of want to kick the can forward. And a good example of that is uh, our uh, Mayor de Blasio in New York City, uh, his first term in office, he had nothing to do with the homeless issues. Could, you know, and all of a sudden the second term rolls around and he rolls out this fancy multi-billion dollar program um, that he felt that, uh, you know, would, would put a dent in, in solving the issue. And he calls it the Turn the Tide program. But it essentially hasn't done anything and it's actually making the problem a lot worse. You know, Michael, for those of us that do not live in the inner city, now I want to kind of put a caveat there and explain that I've been to all the major cities in this country, and I've been to New York numerous times, and on the other side of that coin, I've been to San Francisco and L.A. numerous times. Why, and I I really ask this question, it's a simplified question, but why is the homeless situation so much worse today than as compared to five or ten years ago? I think it just it just goes back to the point that um, well I th- I think a lot of it is just the philosophy of a lot of these people that are in office. Um, you know you have the philosophy of you know if you look at the politicians in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York City, um, they they really they just for whatever reason feel that people should live on streets and they really and if they don't want any help then the then they should just ignore them, and that's pretty much what happens. Um, and you know, a lot, a lot of these politicians just, just 
really don't care. You know, their, their feeling is if you don't like it, then leave. So if, if, some, if people get frustrated with seeing, you know, a lot of the, the homeless people that really need a lot of help and rehabilitation just laying on the streets, and you don't like it, then leave. They don't want you around. And they, they, they start calling your names like you're a bigot or something. That's really a terrible thing that they're doing because actually the very people that, that make these comments, you know, uh, the mayors of San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York City, they themselves are the biggest. They themselves are, they should be ashamed of themselves for allowing people to just lay on these streets. I mean, you, you can only imagine what it must be like to lay on a street in New York City uh, you know, in 100 degree weather or when, when, when the weather goes below zero. I mean, it, it's a disaster, or any time of the day, it, it's a disaster. And a lot of these people that are living on the street, quite a few of them are mentally ill. And these are people that really can't be responsible for themselves. And, and they themselves, because they're not responsible for themselves, really need to rely on the city to do something about it. Now, the mayor of New York City, you know, has created what I call his smoke and mirrors program you know, with the Turn a Tide program, and, and he's writing checks out for a billion dollars. Now, keep in mind that uh, New York City has a homeless problem, probably over 70,000 people and growing, and it's growing and growing and growing by leaps and bounds. And so he, he what he's, what his program is, is um, finding, is hiring these outside groups to search for buildings in the city that are high priced, that are, you know, just so expensive that it's just not even cost effective. So he's spending millions and millions and even into the billions to put homeless people in in, all, in these buildings that are co- that are just costing a ton of money and he's only really helping maybe four or five thousand people so his turn to power program was to open up 90 shelters in new york city and all these all these buildings are very expensive i mean to house just to give you an idea to house somebody in a shelter in manhattan in these expensive buildings is, is, is about five six thousand dollars a month per person and they put two people in a room so the people that are benefiting from this are, A, the slumlords who own these buildings because they're making millions of dollars off of it, and, B, the politicians who are getting lots of donations from these slumlords to do these things. But the actual people that, that actually need the help aren't really benefiting from it at all, and it's, it's really a shame. Michael, again, I'm going to show some naivete here, so bear with me. And if you don't agree with things I say, uh, believe me, I've got big shoulders. I can take it. Correct me. But, okay, let's talk about uh, the people themselves. Let's say that we have a large percentage of them or a small percentage, whatever you deem necessary in our conversation, of mentally ill people that are living on the streets. Okay, what do we do to help them and how? do we get them off the streets with the mental illness and on the other side of that coin for those that are able-bodied and not mentally ill what do we do to get them back into a self-responsibility mode so that they can be contributors to society instead of takers 80 percent of the people that are mentally uh, are mentally Mentally ill live on the streets. So you're, you're, 80% of the people you see on the streets are mentally ill. I mean, those, those are people who are drug addicts or, or uh, just totally, they need they need to get the proper rehabilitation, the proper medication. That's, so that's a large percentage of the people on the streets. So for that, this, the, uh, this, what the city needs, what all the cities need to do is they need to create, you know, they, they can spend a lot less money. They can, you know, either build buildings or they can utilize some of their city buildings that are, you know, not even being used, and they can fix them up to create uh, rehabilitation facilities to help them out. And a lot of these places are in uh, industrial areas within the cities, um, so you're, you, can, you can help them and maybe even get them, a lot of these people, once they receive treatments, get them back out working again. As far as the, the, the other folks that are, that are not mentally ill, um, you know, the city can also help them as well if they want the help. You know, if they don't want the help, then, you know, then there's nothing you eat that you really can do. Um, but if, if they're willing to accept the help, then, you know, we can also, you know, help them to seek, train them, help them put together resumes, help them, you know, look for jobs out there, and, and help them make, get, get affordable housing as well to, to be able to live in and be able to, you know, live a, a decent life and a good quality life. Unfortunately, these cities just, 
they do things, on, excuse my expression, half-assed. And they just, there's just really no commitment there. I mean, unfortunately, from what I see in the city, uh, all the city, major cities around the country, they just really don't care. They just don't care. They're more interested in getting their, their political point of views, you know, forward about how terrible people are for rejecting the fact that these folks live on the street, you know, and that all these people are, you know, bigots and this and that and the other thing. They're more interested in doing that than they are about actually trying to help these poor people on the street. Because, again, the people, in my, as I said earlier in our conversation, the people that are the real bad people are the people that are... Are we still there? Yeah, go ahead. I should have warned you beforehand, Michael, that when you hear the moo of a cow on my program, it means that we have a phone call. Please go ahead, finish your sentence. Go ahead. Oh, so the the, the, the the people that, um, you know, that, uh, well, I kind of lost my train of thought after that. But the bottom line is, is that um, we should be helping these people, and we're not we're not doing enough to do that. You know, before we take the, before we take the caller, Michael, let me ask you this, uh, and give me a short answer on this so we can get the caller in. All of these things and items that we need to do to make this situation perhaps better, it takes money. Where's the money going to come from? Well, it, you know, the, um, New York City has done extremely well over the last eight to ten years, uh, actually the last 15 years in terms of a lot of people are in the city, a lot of people are paying taxes. They're, you know, they have, they have plenty of money. It's just that the problem is is that, you know, instead of the mayor sitting down and actually analyzing everything and taking a look at, you know, what makes sense and, you know, where we can spend the money and get the most bang for the buck, they just seem to just, they don't want to deal with that. They just write these checks out for so much money and they're only helping a very, very small, very, very small percentage of the, of the homeless population. So mm. The money is there. It's just a matter of putting people in positions that can run these programs. And I, I, I often suggest bring in, bring in private industry. Let them run these programs. Uh, in my opinion, the government is incapable of running these programs. Absolutely. So bring, somebody in, bring some people in from private industry and let them run the programs. And make sure the people coming in from private industry have, you know, don't have a conflict of interest with making happy donations to these politicians. Absolutely. Unacceptable as a conflict of interest. I totally agree with that last statement. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. I keep kind of getting confused by some of your comments. If you think the government's incapable of running the programs, why is the city government any better than any of the other branches of the government? Michael, did you hear the question? <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> Government today. Well, so that doesn't make sense. And then, and then the reason that I really called was, um, I don't really believe that the money is there. Um, I don't believe they're spending money on education and some of the other programs like they should. Why do you believe that a forced tax on people that live in cities to take care of this problem is the right answer? Uh, go ahead, Michael, please. Well, you know, first of all, I mean, you know, I think that we should do whatever we can to help people that are going through bad times. I mean, sometimes somebody's homeless because, you know, they went through a divorce, they lost their house, they lost their job. So, I mean, I think that, you know, we all have, we should all have an obligation to help each other out. Now, as far as education is concerned, I'm a big proponent of education. I think that, you know, we should also be investing in making sure that our children receive, you know, the best education possible, without a question. I, I fully agree with you there. Well, um, and I think school that's why, you know, in the, in the record, district area that I'm in, the science teachers provided 30 cents per student to get equipment and supplies and stuff to, to make scientific experiments to teach the young children that, and, and that don't seem like there's enough there, but back to why do you think it's obliga so much of an obligation that you that I should be forced to pay a tax to pay for this program? And I agree with you, we should take care of our fellow man, but I don't agree with you on that we should be forced to pay a tax to do this, and I don't agree with you that the, that the city government is any more competent than the federal government or the state government. All right. Uh, Michael, please. They were more competent than the federal government. Thank you, Zab. I appreciate it. I didn't say they're more competent at all. I, I, I don't know. Where, I never said that. Okay. I, I don't think that they are more competent. What I'm, what I'm saying is they're incompetent. Yes. But I'm saying that, you know, there is, if, if the government is run properly, if we get the proper politicians in place who actually really want to help people and not help themselves, you know, and, you know, are focused more on helping people, 
you know, I, I think there's a lot we can do for everybody. It's just, unfortunately, we don't have that in place right now anywhere in the country. It, Michael, it's, it's a shame. Yeah, your point is so well taken right there that in, anywhere in the country. Uh, I got to tell you that uh, my milk of human kindness, the pitcher, is empty in the refrigerator. When I start uh, hearing about all the problems with the homeless uh, basically defecating and urinating and leaving trash and needles in front of businesses in Sacramento, San Francisco, L.A., Chicago, wherever the case might be, uh, and it doesn't seem like this problem is going to go away. It doesn't seem like it's being addressed, like you said earlier, by either the federal government or state and local authorities, uh, and the rest of humanity that's trying to make a living and trying to be responsible, they're the ones that are suffering for this. I don't see an end to this problem the way it's being handled now, so if you're the czar for a day or a week or a year that can settle this and clean it up, tell us what we need to do. Well, you know, first of all, you need to clean up government. You need to get rid of a lot of these incompetent commissioners of, you know, the different departments. Like, uh, the, like the, for example, in New York City, we have a guy who's a commissioner of, um, you know, the homeless. And uh, he's just terrible. You get rid of these people. Uh, and you also vote. You also, I mean, you also got to vote out some of these incompetent people that are like mayors and stuff. But what I would do is I would... Um, I would just do a complete analysis of the city, the, the problems that we're having with, you know, in the homeless population. I would immediately take a look at facilities that we have where we can move people to. And I would, I would change, I would work on trying to change the law where, you know, you, you allow people to sleep on the streets because I think it's, that's a terrible thing. The first thing you want to do is move them off the streets because that's, it's terrible not only for the people that have to live on the streets, but it's not a good situation where you have people that are mentally ill. Uh, living on the street and impacting the quality of lives of people that you know, want to live in the city and live in the city in a comfortable environment. So I think it's got to be win-win for everybody, win-win for the people living on the streets and win-win for the people that uh, live in you know, living in the city as well. But we have to help each other out. Well, you know as well as I do that... I focus on being responsible with money and you know, making sure that we're not overspending, which is unfortunately what the mayor in New York City is doing is he's just way overspending. Yeah. You know, I mean, think about it. To house somebody in a, in a homeless shelter in the city, the city is spending the equivalent of what, a, what an entry-level job would be for teaching or, or, or joining the police force. I mean, it's, it's outrageous. Wow. Michael, let me ask you this question, and, and it shows the ambiguity of the whole situation as far as I'm concerned. A uh, report came out day before yesterday about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and she is from the District of Queens in New York. You know that very well, I'm sure. And her district is one of the filthiest, one of the most corrupt districts anywhere in New York, and yet she comes out of that district as a congresswoman and preaches to the world that we need to make cutbacks for her Green New Deal to where we don't have private cars for transportation. Nobody should fly. She condemned agriculture in the meat industry, wants to redo all of agriculture. How can this woman come out and shoot her bartender mouth off to anybody when she comes from a sleazy, filthy district in New York that she's not helping to clean up? Well, you know, in response to that, I have not been to her district. I've seen some, you know, on television, I've seen some video of some of the, you know, the trash that they showed over there and everything like that. I think that this brings to a bigger issue, and that is a lot of these politicians that are self-serving, and I think that she's a good example of that. She's very self-serving. She's somebody who has a lot to learn, a lot to learn, and she sounds like she's, she talks more than she listens, and she talks more than she learns, and that's a bad thing for her and a bad thing for the community that she represents. I think that she needs to spend more. I think both of these people that are spending all this time, you know, like, for example, during the hearings where you have people trying to destroy other people, and they need to, these people all need to focus on their communities and making their communities better places to live in, and they're not doing that. That's very sad. No, I and agree. That's a big problem in our country. No, I totally agree. We're in a very sad state of affairs right now with a lot of these people because they're more they're more interested in you know seeing themselves on tv and more interested in getting you know good publicity for themselves and they're less interested in actually helping their constituents and i, I feel bad about that because you know we're all being negatively affected impacted by that 
Would you say that uh, in order to get the ball rolling down the alley to hit some pins, that uh, we're really going to have to, we the public, are really going to have to point our fingers at the elected mayors of various communities and not ask but demand that they get things done? Is that what it's going to take? Well, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate. You know, I also work a, work a full-time job. I'm an advocate. I work a full-time job. And in order for us to be successful in getting things done the right way, we all have to get out there and be willing to fight. We all have to be willing to get into politicians' faces and um, you know let them know how we feel and be you know really be very persistent about it. And it, it takes a lot of time. And it takes a lot of work. Unfortunately, a lot of people are like, "Well, we're too busy," or "I, I can't. I don't have time to do this." And, uh, you know, I've always, there was a guy on a radio talk show years ago I used to listen to, his name is Bob Grant, and he used to say, use your influence, it counts. And, you know, a lot of people don't do that. They, they just, they expect things to be taken care of on their own. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that if there's something that bothers you, you, you know, sometimes you have to be willing to invest the time to go out and get other people that feel the same way you do and, and fight the system. And unfortunately, as we can see what's going on in this country, we don't have enough of that. And that's why I think we're in such a bad state of affairs. I tell you what, uh, I really appreciate your openness and candid answers and uh, addressing this issue. This is Michael Fisher, nationwide homeless expert. And, Michael, I want to extend to you that this is an issue that we're not going to forget about on our program. Probably going to call you back to have you on in the near future. Merry Christmas, and thank you for taking the time to be on the show this morning. Well, you know, it's nice to hear you're allowed to say Merry Christmas on the air, because <laughs> So many places we're not allowed to do that anymore, right? On this program, uh, state of affairs. I, I can guarantee. I can guarantee. Uh, we all have to get up and speak up against all those things. I think that's important. Absolutely. On this program, we will never underline that word. Never, Michael. Ever be politically correct. God bless you, man. Thanks. God bless you, too. Merry Christmas. All right, sir. Take care. Michael Fisher, you know, this is a problem, and it really is a problem, the homeless attitude that's going on across our country. And what are we going to do about it? I mean, it's absolutely rising to levels of where it is taking over, taking over cities and destroying businesses, destroying the aesthetic value of cities, destroying parks, destroying everything that is supposed to be good and wholesome about the cities. And I don't know what the answer is, but I think it's going to be us, the people, that are going to have to point and demand from city and local leadership that it gets taken care of and it's stopped somehow. Uh, I got one other good word, and then we are going to go to Wheels over at the main studio. Don't forget our friends at 7K Metals. I was introduced to 7K Metals about a month ago, and it is an excellent program with silver purchases to help you build your financial security and future. That's exactly what Deanne and I are doing. You can create your own, if you will, security bank through silver purchases, and these purchases Purchases are sent right to your home. It's a great saving opportunity for you and your family and a valued treasure for your loved ones in the future. So find out more about 7K Metals and silver purchases. Get a hold of my friends Lon Hardy at 312-8699 or Sharon Wilmot at 430-3259. They are ready and willing to help you. Just mention my name, 7K Metals, and find out more about investing in your financial security with silver. Right now, wheels, take it away. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, thank you much. Don't forget our dear friends, and they are Patterson's Electronics at 421 East Main in Burley. Curtis and Lorena, they are really 
people that care about the community and they care about uh, charities. They just donated uh, $500 to two of the top charities that have been mentioned at their business. I really salute uh, what they're doing at Patterson's Electronics. I urge you to shop in there for Christmas. They've got all your electronic needs, home theater systems, surveillance cameras, car stereos and speakers. They got it all, let me tell you. Complete sound systems. They've got all your TVs, Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, LG TVs. Free delivery within the area. And I'll tell you what, they've got the technicians to set everything up, too. They're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6, and they're waiting to serve you for your Christmas shopping at Patterson's Electronics. 421 East Main in Burley. Number to call, 678-6997. I've been waiting for this conversation for the last couple of days because I cannot wait to hear his response to really this mess that's been created back in Washington, D.C. by the wayward Democrats. And we welcome to the telephone this morning our man that really knows. He's an expert on public policy and energy and a political analyst. Dan Perkins, my friend, how are you? I'm well, Zeb. Thank you. How are you? I got to tell you, Dan, I'm good physically, but mentally, I'm really sick and tired, and I got to tell you, almost fighting mad as to the idiocy and incompetency that's going on in our government. And I'm not going to back off on those words. So let me let me ask you a question about what you just said. If you took uh, if you took ten people, if you went out on the street. <clears throat> down from the studio or from the from the ranch and picked p- 10 people at, at purely random how many of them would agree with what you just said well i guess i would have to say uh and i'm prejudicial when i say this because i know my neighborhood and i know my area i would say 10 out of 10 okay uh i i'm not surprised i think that there are a lot of americans who uh don't have the platform that you and i have but are just as angry as you and I are. And um, they're going to demonstrate that anger at the voting booth in November of next year. And uh, I think the Democrats do not see the wave coming that's going to come. It's going to basically take them out of power in the House and a a super landslide victory for Donald Trump. But let me ask you this, Dan, and I've been waiting to ask you personally this question. I don't think it's going to go away. I don't think that the Democrats are smart enough to, even if Donald Trump wins in 2020, which, God help him, I hope he does, but when you start hearing Democratic representatives like Karen Bass from California yesterday coming out and saying that she would push to impeach Donald Trump again if he wins in 2020, this is never going to die. This is never going to go away. These people just will not quit. Well... You know, it's interesting. I, I was on a show this morning, and I and the, the gentleman I was on with <clears throat> said to me, um, that raised the same issue that you raised, and he said, he's, he's asking me the question, how did you know when you wrote your commentary weeks ago that that was going to happen? Because nobody was talking about it. And I said, <clears throat> it's, it's a matter of understanding how these people think uh, they don't think there's any possibility that they're going to lose the House. And they think if they keep the House, they're, they're going to win the Senate. And as a result of winning the Senate, <clears throat> they will have, then have the ability to have a trial and convict Donald Trump and re- remove him from office. Now, those are, those are incredibly uh, wishful on their part. Um, but, but I wrote about it. Uh, maybe a month and a half ago, two months ago, I also wrote over a year ago that I thought that Hillary was going to be the nominee. <laughs> and the way things are going, it looks like she could very possibly be the nominee. You led me. Uh, for the Democratic Party. <clears throat> so uh, I look at what's going on, and I look at, um, I, I don't think that you and I had talked uh, after the initial House Intelligence Committee hearings. I don't think so, but no. we may have. But what I said in a lot of commentaries and a lot of interviews, I said, we need to thank the Democratic Party for two gifts that they gave us during those hearings. The first gift that they gave us is that you and I 
and a lot of other conservative commentators have always been talking about the, the impact of the deep state. But the deep state is a, a, a nondescript, arbitrary term to deal with the bureaucracy in place. When we saw the people from the State Department in those panels in the uh, committee <clears throat> hearings, Schiff put a face on the deep state. We saw people who believe that they know better than the President of the United States, and they were angry with the President of the United States for not coming to them and getting their permission to do what he wanted to do in foreign policy. None of them could testify that they saw anything that the President did wrong in terms of the law, but they did a lot of things as far as alienating the deep state. So the Democrats gave us a look at the... And what we found out is what we had believed, <clears throat> that the deep state was arrogant, the deep state was uh, opinionated, was anti-Trump. And so we saw, the, to me, the, the moment that was the most disconcerting and, and proving my point, uh, I had the opportunity, depending upon your position, many decades ago to testify before the Senate Subcommittee on Pension and Investments. And I was facing across the table from <clears throat> senators and their lawyers and everybody else, and I would have never thought to, to do anything uh, that would degrade or embarrass that senator that was asking me questions. Yet we had the Lieutenant Colonel Vindman chastising the ranking member on that committee uh, because he didn't address him as lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. um, that just shows another example of the arrogance. The second piece is that we've been talking about, long before Donald Trump got in office, we have been talking about on your show, and I've done many other shows, about what's happening in the American education system. And we saw, to courtesy of the Democrats, three law professors who showed us what's going on in the colleges and universities in the United States and why we need to be concerned and why we got to do something about it. You know, Dan, I remember vividly, honestly, the day, and it was uh, back in the spring of this year, the, uh, I had you on the program, and you made the comment that you said that you absolutely would stand behind the fact that you believed Hillary was going to run again for the presidency. I can tell you, you're a dear friend of this program, but I can tell you when you said that, I rolled my eyes to the ceiling and I thought, oh, come on. But now publicly and on this radio program all across this nation, I want to say I'm sorry because every day that goes by, it looks like your prediction is going to come to fruition, and that scares me to death. Well, I understand, but it doesn't scare me at all. In fact, I can't think of a better... I can't think of a better person <clears throat> to be a foil for Donald Trump. And and remember, when he was running against her, quote, she was the seasoned veteran, and he was the person who knew nothing about politics or government. He was incompetent. <clears throat> it's now three years before, four years later. Look what he's done to this country. Look what he's done in terms of unemployment in creating jobs in the minorities, uh, bringing businesses back to the United States, having the strongest economy in the world, <clears throat> so that he's a different candidate as president, and four years of president, Hillary Clinton is no different than she was when she ran against him four years ago. So I would relish the opportunity for <clears throat> Donald Trump to run against Hillary Clinton. You know, Dan, let me ask you this. What about the other 12 wilting flowers that have been standing up behind the Democratic podiums, whether it's Warren or whether it's uh, Biden or whether it's wild-haired Bernie or whatever? Are they going to go quietly into the good night, or what's going to happen? Well, if, again, um, look, at, look at the dynamics here. The dynamics that the leading candidate of the 12 is Joe Biden, and he's got about 22%. <clears throat> now, unless everybody else drops out 
and he's the last man standing. He does not have enough votes to go into the Democratic National Convention and win the nomination on the first ballot. So I believe that it's that as long as we continue with a, a number of candidates that we have, we're going to have a brokered convention, and that's when Hillary will step in and say, I'm willing to run for the presidency. And, she, and my guess is still believe, unless, again, the same caveat, unless she's marched away in an orange jumpsuit, which is possible, uh, she will be the candidate, the nominee for the Democratic Party. Because nobody else has got the, the, the floor. And, <clears throat> you know, you talked about, I asked you the question early on in the program, you, you got ten people, how many felt the same way you did? And you said ten. I believe that the idea that there are American citizens interested in voting in large enough majorities that want to adopt these outrageous tax and spend policies of the Democratic Party. They're not going to, the idea that we're going to spend $52 trillion for Medicare for all, Wall Street's not in favor of that. They've already said if, if, if she's, the, she's the nominee, we're not going to financially support her. And without Wall Street supporting the Democratic nominee, they're going nowhere. So everybody's got baggage on that side of the table. Everybody's got baggage because of one thing. They have forgotten the American people. They don't care about the American people. They've decided they know better than the American people what's best for the American people. And that's what's, that's what's clearly on the stage. We're deci they've decided we're going to have universal health care and universal income free college, forgive all the debt, they've decided all these things that are what the American people want. And if they're going to run on those, I just don't see how that's possible. I don't think that the American people believe in the idea that we should give free health care to illegals entering the country while not providing health care for our own citizens. Absolutely. So I think all the things they're talking about are losers, and the Democrats just don't understand how far out of touch they are with the reality of the American electorate. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up with one final uh, little thought, if you will, and you can go ahead and laugh at me loudly if you want to. I believe, I, I know, but I'm giving you the opportunity. I honestly believe that Michael Bloomberg's getting into the Democratic possible nominee for president's state is nothing more than front money that it's laid down like rose petals on the driveway for more advertising for the Democratic Party and possibly Hillary Clinton. How far off am I? Well, if, let, me, let me try and rephrase that for you. Are you saying that you believe that Bloomberg is getting in um, because he wants to take out Joe Biden so that Hillary can come in. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm basically saying the money he's spending, outlandish millions and millions of dollars on advertising for Michael Bloomberg in a subtle way, actually he's creating an aura for advertising for the Democratic Party and I think laying a path for Hillary to jump in and walk down that rose petal driveway. I, I I agree. I think that um, that uh, the the millions that he's already spent hasn't moved the needle very much. You know, it's interesting. There was a poll that was released yesterday. Even though Hillary is not a declared candidate, she outdraws Biden from from Democratic voters. So I think it's just a matter of setup, and I think that. The, the, the 12 or 13 left on the stage do not have the ability and the resources to compete with Bloomberg's $55 billion. Mm -mm. Um, and so we've, we've got, he's an outlier in the sense that he's running for the nomination, but not going through the normal process. I would be very surprised that prior to winning the nomination, uh, he appears in any of the debates. Because he won't, he won't qualify under the Democratic rules. So right. the question is, will the Democrats waive the rules in order to present an opportunity to put Bloomberg on the stage? And if so, what about the people who have left the, the Democratic campaign who didn't meet those requirements? So it, it's it's a real it's a real can of worms, <clears throat> all brought on by the Democrats because they have no idea what the hell they're doing. 
I wish I had more time, and I don't, but I'm going to have you back shortly in the near future. Uh, just absolutely appreciate everything you say. Uh, great political analyst and a friend of this program, Dan Perkins, we extend to you and your family a very Merry Christmas, and thank you for coming on the show this morning. Anytime. I'd love to be on the, on the show again, and thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, Dan. You and your family, too. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. He really lays it out so that you can understand what's going on, and I appreciate him. He's been on my show, oh, man, 20, 30 times already. Dan Perkins lives down in Florida, <laughs> and I'll bet you he's not seeing the snow that we're seeing right now. Oh. Oh my, let's get a commercial on. Oh, I got to tell you what's going on over at Edith's Cafe, 144 East Highway 81. Did you know? Did you know? And you should be aware of this. They're sponsoring the Bar J Wranglers this Friday, December 13th, right there at their event center. Did you know that? Well, I'm telling you, I started telling you this about uh, yesterday or the day before. This is going to be at the event center that holds 25, uh, I don't know how many people. It's huge. At 2,500 Washington Avenue in Burley. What a Christmas present for your spouse to get those tickets for a group that I really enjoy, Bar J Wranglers. And there's still some show tickets left, show only tickets, and there are still very limited dinner and show tickets left. Now the uh, program's going to start at 7.30 on the 13th, and I urge you to call Edith's Cafe and get the reservation tickets. Absolutely. 878-2248. That number again 8782248 Edis Cafe 144 East Highway 81 in Burley not only good food but this Saturday great music and fun with the Bar J Wranglers don't miss that uh Right now, I think what we're going to do is have a weather update. And uh, the weather update is sponsored by our friends at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Oh, my goodness sakes. You go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com, and you just check out all the delicious meats. How about the marinated pork ribs? Oh, or all the tri tips. And of course, don't forget they've got all the different kinds of bacon, and they've got all the the sausages and my favorite the bratwurst oh you can splurge and enjoy scarrow's meats 331 north road jerome the number to call 324-7657 right now here's gina with the weather Looks like we're expecting some rain and or snow over the next couple of days. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit breezy out of the west at about 10 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour. Looking at a high of 43 tonight. Snow showers are possible mixed with rain, especially in the valley. Steady temperatures is about 39, and it's going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tomorrow, rain and snow mixed. Expecting a high of 45 by tomorrow night. Rain and snow likely. More snow showers up in the higher elevations. Low of 32. Going to be breezy as well. Gusts as high as 40 miles an hour. For Friday, rain and snow mixed with a high of 41 and it's going to be breezy as well. That's going to continue for Friday night. New snow accumulations anywhere from 1 to 2 inches possible with a low of 25. And by the weekend, looks like mostly cloudy skies. 20% chance of snow showers in the forecast. Highs are going to be in the low 30s. Lows right around 20. That's a look at your weather forecast for Oh, thank you, Gina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And brought to you by Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Oh, I'm telling you, folks, I got to call down and get some more bratwurst. Oh, they're good, good, good. 324-7657. And it's true. Scarrow's Meats, changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. I uh, want to take a moment to tell you again that next Thursday, Next Thursday, this is really important, on December 19th from 8 to 11, the hours of my program, we're going to be over at Denny's Restaurant in Burley at 611 North Overland in Burley for my entirety of my program broadcasting live and direct for the Denny's Old Fashioned Christmas. We've done this now for five or six years, and we're going to have Santa Claus there, and we're going to have Christmas carols. This lady, this uh, Ashley Ludlow that sang last year, everybody 
Everybody said, please get her back. She is outstanding. Going all over the facility, singing Christmas carols, it was beautiful. We're going to have a lot of prizes, and it's all for fun. It's all for great food, and it's for Christmas. An old-fashioned Christmas party at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley, next Thursday from 8 to 11, and we urge you to be there, okay? Merry Christmas. I want to also tell you a little bit about our dear friends at our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, yeah, I look outside at the snow and the freezing rain, and they've got all the tires, all the tread designs, all the sizes for you to safely get through whatever the weather dumps on the highways and byways. They've got all your winter tires like the Himalaya or the Observe GS uh, 1-5 or the Winter Cat. They've got them all, all of them. And they've got all your tire chains. And you know what? When you say woe to the car, you want to stop, they've got the best in brake service, too. Absolutely with highly trained brake technicians. And don't forget front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries. And, oh, with the colder temperatures, don't forget, you better check your battery and make sure it's going to stand up under the cold. They've got excellent batteries at all seven locations. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley, the best, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. What have we got cooking for tomorrow on Thursday? Well, I'll tell you what, we're uh, going to start with our open hour of 8.06 to 9 o'clock with Open Forum. Uh, tomorrow Tomorrow, I don't think we're going to have the chamber report. I think Penny said she's going to be out of town. And uh, we are going to hear from our dear friend Nick at Burley Physical Therapy. Rita's going to be on the program. And we've got Cash County School Days. And I believe we're going to be having a visit with uh, Greystone Crossing, too. So we've got a lot of people coming on our show for tomorrow. We always end the program by saying the way things were are the way things ought to be, but the four most important words are, in God we trust. Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.06.